Good morning folks. Um, I haven't done an oil demo on film for a long time uh, so I thought I would just do a continuation of a painting I'm working on in the studio at the moment of the uh, Lake District, uh, the River Brathe and that's as far as I've got at the moment. I've done the backdrop of trees um, roughly scrubbed in towards the finish and now I've got to do the water. A lot of people like the way I paint water so I thought it would be a good idea to do the... Uh, I've got about an hour before I have to go to work to the gallery to to paint the water. There's the image I'm using on my computer screen of a photograph I took last November. Gorgeous day, fairly flat light so no great pinging lights but uh, there we are, so just before I start the actual painting, there's my palette which is lodged under my easel with the help of a small piece of wood here that I've, I've had for 30 years and that's all the colours I'm using titanium white, cadmium yellow, a crimson, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and in that little pot I've got some um, Robertson's glaze medium. So without further ado let's get painting. Okay these are the brushes I'm going to be using. I have a small rigger here just for one or two highlights on the water but otherwise I should be using these three boys. They're all by Rosemary & Co. Yeah, this is the one I should be using mostly. It's a a short flat number 12 Eclipse brush. So let's get cracking. I'm not going to talk too much while I'm painting. So I'm just dipping the brush in my dipper of glaze medium which speeds up the drying of the paint and uh, gives it a bit more flow I'm not one of these painters who tends to have about 20 colours on the palette. I like to keep it simple red, yellow and a blue augmented with the uh, burnt sienna. <coughs> I'm changing the mix all the time. One thing that can let some amateur painters, am amateur paintings, or paintings done by amateurs, down is to not change the mixes enough. You mix one colour and paint it almost like a door. There are lots of subtle changes going on when you really look. Often people say to me, oh I love the way you paint water, it's so difficult. In actual fact, water is easier to paint than trees above the water. Much easier. You're really only painting what's above the water line. I'm constantly changing my mixes here. Red, yellow and blue. That's the basis of any colour. You can mix any colour with a red, yellow and a blue. So why complicate it? I 
see I'm just knocking in the basic colours of the tree and what you have to be wary of is where your reflections are I'm painting the reflection of this tree here and if you're not careful when you're painting either from a photo or life don't put the reflection of that tree here because it won't read right that sounds obvious but it's surprising how many times you see a painting with the reflections in the wrong place See, I'm just using sideways strokes. Don't paint your water diagonally. I'm using standard oils here. I changed my modus upper on upper my way of painting. <laughs> recently I used to use fast drying oils for any smaller paintings like this the um, Winder Newton Alkids but I've changed to pretty much standard oils now with the addition of a Michael Harding titanium white with dryers in so that just speeds up the drying a wee bit and does the um, medium the uh, glaze excuse me glaze medium just concentrating on these subtle changes of color Painting for me is all about subtlety. If you want to paint nature as it is, then subtlety is the key. Just using the brush, it's lovely sharp chisel edge to just move the paint around a bit suggest ripples and over here the water is reflecting this bank of clumpy rough grass painting trees in a slightly different way to how I used to rather than using the uh, one inch household brush as I have done for 30 odd years I'm doing most of my painting with this flat brush now just to try and achieve a more painterly feel <coughs> Cleaning the brush now, going towards the bottom corner where now it's reflecting 
trees above and as you look down into water more the tone will be darker Still a red, yellow and blue. One thing I always say in all my demos is to keep standing back. I am actually standing whilst I'm painting. If you sit down it's very easy to get too comfortable and too close to the picture literally and you can't quite literally see the bigger picture if you stand back you will see any drawing errors and Errors in tones and colours which you just can't see when you're only 18 inches away from the picture. And you'll notice I'm holding the brush midway down. Don't hold the brush on the ferrule, it's very easy to hold it like that. Put your finger on the painting so you're only six inches from the canvas like when you're doing your homework at school so always stand back don't paint from the wrist, paint from the shoulders that's beginning to look wet now I'm just going to adjust the this little bank here position of a few strokes of my household boyo can't resist using this yet such a useful tool which very quickly describes tussocks of grass like this It depends how far you want to go, how much detail you want to describe. A fault of mine, I tend to put too much detail in often. I don't want it to look too photographic. But I have a job stopping myself. Putting more detail in here sort of separates this off from the background, give the picture a little more depth.
see I'm holding the brush with the thumb and forefinger just splaying out the bristles. Let's put a bit more burnt sienna on the palette. Not a colour I use very much. I tend to stick with the red, yellow and blue. But it is useful for some of the darks. Never use a black. Only use burnt sienna with ultramarine. That can give the darkest dark you can ever want. Black I find a bit of a dead colour. Well, it is a dead colour. Well, I'll do for that for now. Continue with the reflections. Just at the bottom of those tussocks of grass, touch of yellow in the mix. There we are. Now, where am I up to? knocking noise is my walking stick. Not that I need that to walk unaided but I use it as a mole stick when I'm doing details just hold the stick like that over the top of the painting and then I can do any details. I've never seen the wisdom of using the traditional mole stick which you, has a pad of leather on it which you push into the painting. Why smudge painting you've just done? Anyway, that's my thoughts. And I know the great American painter Richard Schmidt uses a similar method. So if it's good enough for him, it's certainly good enough for little old me in England, a jobbing landscape painter. Uh, we're nearly here with this water now. Not much else to do. Just punch in the darks of the tree trunks, not too dark, and it's a bit too dark. Soften the mix a bit. The addition of a bit of titanium white. It's just these subtle changes you've got to get right. bank here. Which I started when I left off this painting a couple of days ago. I've got to keep an eye on the time because I'm opening up the gallery 
at 11 o'clock, this being Saturday. Well, we open up 11 o'clock every day, except Mondays and Tuesdays when we don't open. And you see, painting that water wasn't terribly difficult. Downward strokes. I think what puts a lot of amateurs off painting water is, uh, and by amateurs, by the way, I don't, uh, I don't mean to be insulting. I mean people who don't make a living out of painting, hobby artists. The thing that puts them off is. They think of water as a transparent liquid, which of course it is. How do I paint a transparent liquid? And suddenly panic takes over. But all water is, is a reflective surface. When it's on a slow moving river like this, it's just a mirror disturbed by Uh, breeze on the surface otherwise if you just think of it as a reflective surface and paint what you see that's the key not what you think you see or what you know you know water is a transparent liquid but when it's part of a, a river or a lake it just becomes a reflective surface so paint what you see there's no greater secret than that there is no secret for painting water paint what's there and some of you might say oh it's easy for you to say just because you're good at it but that's all I'm doing is painting what's in front of me. Put a little more red on the palette. I still haven't got out of the habit of putting fairly small amounts of paint on my palette because painting with alkyds for the last 30 40 years, if you put, squeeze too much out, then the paint goes hard and it's unusable. So I've been fairly frugal with the amount I've put out and it's still automatic for me to be fairly sparse with my squeezed out blobs. Just a few cross strokes. I want to overdo this. You need this isn't so easy to do with a a standard hog brush. You need a brush like this with a nice sharp chisel edge and these brushes retain that edge. Beautifully made brushes by Rosemary. It's not far off now, getting this to look like water, I hope. Just watch those.
colours bark, I don't get it too hot. Colours in water are generally duller than what they're reflecting above, so if you make the colours as bright or worse still brighter than the colours above it ain't going to look right. It will look imbalanced and the human eye will know that or well, the perceptive human eye anyway. I think as an artist you almost plagued by uh, an intense what's the word I want sense of observation and you know immediately when something doesn't look right and it's often where amateur paintings can fall down what can separate a good decent painting from a really fine professional looking one Restate that directly below that bush. Few subtle changes of colour. The backdrop here. Standing back now to look, and that doesn't look too terrible. Just restate some of these little reflections. Just holding the brush at a slight angle, not parallel to the surface. Just tease out those little reflections there. Just a little more white in the mix. One or two little marks to delineate that water line there. So I'm using a rigger. I don't like the some of the tiny little short riggers you can buy from art shops. This is where you need a steady hand, which I don't have. I have to use the stick, which I don't like using. I much prefer doing it freehand, as it were, because then you can hold the brush. I'm just going to move this over slightly. You can hold the brush. the end. I always advise folks to hold the brush right at this end, not the ferrule end. If you hold it there and try to do a fine line you'll end up with a blinking great big thick 
line which ruins it. Just a few little marks there, not too white. It's quite light there because it's catching the sunlight here. It's just a slightly darker tone there. That just lifts that, gives it that separation. And similarly over here. streaks of pure titanium white. This is reflecting the sky colour which you can't see apart from that bit on the top edge. Move this over a bit. Just letting the very tip of the brush skip over the surface. So obviously if you push the brush into the surface, it's going to pick up the wet paint underneath, which we don't want. Because then we'll end up with a muddy grey. I'm barely letting the brush touch the surface, it's just skipping over. And these lines must be horizontal. If you paint them sloping, then that's not going to look right. Water doesn't flow uphill. I shall restate these when the painting is drier. Just a few suggestions now, just to give it that bit of sparkle. to that in a little while. Let it dry off a touch. And just one or two little refinements. Try and get this water looking slightly more wet. I love teasing out these little subtleties. Now you can see that's taken half an hour to paint 
paint the entirety of the water. I think that looks okay. And then and two more bits. There's a fence post over here, so just place that in. Using this rigger, this time rather than the tip, I'm placing it slight angle so I can get a broader stroke. And I'm still there, a white post there. lit on the right edge in the rest of this clump of grass in the foreground where I was standing I took this photo I'd just done a painting looking the other way behind where this is on site it's one of my lovely collectors in United States bought and she saw it on Facebook uh, just going to suggest these grasses with some broad strokes blue and green of course makes sorry blue and green Blue and yellow make green. And but if you do it just blue and yellow, <coughs> it can look a bit acidic if you're not careful. So with the addition of a little red, I'm just going to squeeze a little more paint out. With the addition of red, it can just quieten that green down. Again, don't just paint one green because it's going to look very boring if you paint one solid <coughs> green. See, I'm changing the mix here. If you really look grass, especially this rough tussocky, tussocky grass. There are all sorts of colours there. Paint what you see, not what you think you see. Open the mind to what's in front of you. Comes out here a little more.
And I'm going to use my household brush again. Still using this for bits of the painting. And this is quite useful for a few descriptions of thick grass. Just tease the paint. And you see that's quite effective. I shouldn't be showing everybody this because everybody will be doing it and we're going to have to kill you all. Trade secrets. Just don't tell any professional painters, they might get the idea and think it's a good one. So keep it quiet amongst you. Quite like these sort of finishing touches, thick paint. I'm changing this mix constantly. See how that simulates grass, hopefully. Move the edge of the board just slightly on the edge there so I can tack it properly. No. Just to and the two individual strands of grass, oops, not the furniture. I'm going to use this brush, which is a single hair bristle from my household brush. And it's sellotaped onto the handle of an old rigger. And this is a brilliant, do I say it myself, way of getting a thin line like that. You try doing that with a rigger, it's almost impossible. Just need a touch more titanium white out. I don't want to overdo it, but just a few streaks like that. See how fine those lines are. Quite enjoy doing these bits. Uh, again, these sort of little impasto strokes. It's very fine line, but it's quite thick paint, if that makes sense. That again, that gives the painting that 3D quality, hopefully. lifts this just a few 
few strands there of green. the other side of this fence post and then I can just describe two bits of tussocky detail here don't want to overdo it Two for the price of one now, I've got two hairs on this one. find the the more you do then the more you see when you're sort of midway through a painting you see the bigger picture as it were you don't tend to see the finer details and the further on you get you'll see these subtle little nuances. I'm just going to have a go now at putting some more of the reflections of light on the water, reflections of sky, using this smaller long flat eclipse brush. Try it off. is titanium white with a tiny touch of ultramarine blue uh, the paint is still a little bit wet underneath so I can't do this properly yet this is one to do when the paints a little drier and that's the advantage of using alkyd paint it dries that much faster this will dry in a probably a day or two at the most enough for me to place these marks superimpose them over the top of the wet paint but it is just a bit too wet at the moment so I'll abandon that for now but it's just a bit of 
extra detail I'm just going to just accentuate the lit top edge of this and the side there will probably do for now. He says just spotting more here. A little grassy mounds goes down to the banks where the sheep come down to drink. out a little bit more. So where you need to hold your breath. Restate these, whatever they are, skylights. I don't know, the eyes drawn to that a little more. Chimney pot there. There we go. For now, until the rest of it's dry, that's as much as I can do. Hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see this painting when it's up and framed, and more work by other artists as well as me, go to my gallery at www.peterbarkerfineart.com. .co.uk. Thanks very much. Bye now.